to AP European History with Dr. Borovkin. Today we continue to discuss life and work of Frederick the Great, one of philosopher kings, one of the so-called enlightened monarchs. Last time we talked about his youth, about his education, about his uh, rise to power, uh, the beginning of uh, the war uh, for Silesia, uh, and today we will discuss about his discuss his reforms, uh, a little bit more about his youth, uh, and finally his contribution to uh, European uh, political order. So uh, in this war, he um, shows his first uh, talents as a military leader. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention one important thing. In, in When I discussed his uh, youth and his relationship with his father, uh, what I really need to say is that it was very dramatic because at one point he wanted to run away to England, uh, and he had a friend uh, who was also an aristocrat, uh, von, von Katte. It was his most dear friend of his youth. Uh, and then they were caught, and his father wanted to execute them both. But in the end, he executed um, von Katte, and uh, Frederick had to uh, watch the execution on, of von Katte. Could you had to watch execution of von Katte, his head was chopped off, and that was pretty much a dramatic moment in his relationship with his father. Uh, in any case, um, going, getting back to our story, um, the uh, Silesian War, as it turned out, was just the beginning of a series of wars which Frederick had to uh, endure. and. Um, so it, it lasted first from 40 to 42, then the second phase from 44 to 46. Uh, but but Teresa, Maria Teresa would not uh, reconcile herself to the loss of, uh, of this province to who he called this terrible man. And she just continued to um, uh, seek revenge or a possibility to win it back, which slowly, uh, but, and, but brings us to the Seven Year War. Um, so the Seven Year War uh, starts with the so-called diplomatic revolution. And the diplomatic revolution is uh, uh, in 1756, uh, Austria and France conclude an alliance, which was a reversal of almost a hundred years of foreign policy, because up to this point, the Habsburgs and the French kings were enemies uh, from the times of uh, 30 years war uh, and, um, and 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 even earlier because uh, the French always regarded the Habsburgs as their main enemy well now they they are so much afraid of young dynamic Prussia uh, that both of them conclude an alliance that would lead to uh, the daughter of uh, Maria Theresa Marie Antoinette being married to uh, the young Dauphin, the future king of France, Louis XVI. So this is a called diplomatic revolution, the unexpected new alliance of Austria and France against Frederick, against Prussia. Prussia allies itself with Britain, uh, not so much uh, partly because of the, the English kings, George, uh, are Hanoverian and they have a same mother in the preceding generation. So there's some kind of relative connections, but mostly because England is much more interested in overseas uh, and in the uh, American empire of the French, uh, which they really want to take over, uh, and not so much in European ideas. So in the Seven Year War in Europe, England does not take any part. It just gives money to Frederick. Uh, Frederick has to fight alone. Uh, and now he's got two superpowers, France and Austria. Who are uh, against him. So this is a, a pretty tough battle. Uh, the war went pretty badly for Frederick. Uh, uh, the first battle he won uh, pretty pretty well uh, and easy, uh, but then he was crushed at one battle. Um, he was crushed and lost a third of his troops in one battle and had to run away. And in October uh, 62, 1762, he wrote uh, to a friend, we can only hope to save 
fragments of my territory. Uh, to make things worse for Frederick, Russia uh, joined the war on the side of the Allies, which means France and Austria. And Russian troops were marching towards Berlin, and they did take Berlin. Uh, in early 63, and this is when there's a moment of total despair uh, for Frederick. He writes letters to his sister, and this is one person he loved more than anybody else all his life, uh, and wrote wonderful letters to her, Wilhelmina, her name is. And this is a letter basically says that he's certain that Prussia would be divided up uh, and would cease to exist. There will not be any Prussia anymore. Uh, is totally in despair, and he wanted to go into battle and die in battle. So this is the situation of 1763. But then a miracle happens that everybody calls the miracle because it sort of changed history over time, uh, immediately. So uh, Russian Empress uh, Elizabeth, uh, who is the daughter of Peter the Great, she dies. Uh, and, uh, and then... Um, to, to power comes um, uh, a person who is known as, as Peter the uh, Third. Peter the Third is the grandson of uh, Peter the Great, but he was raised in uh, in, in um, uh, Holstein, which is a German province on the borders with Denmark. So he was uh, a young man, uh, and and he was married to a, a young German princess. Who, Catherine, who Elizabeth picked herself, and she would be known as Catherine the Great. Uh, but at this point, she's just a German princess who is married to a German prince who happens to be the heir to the Russian throne. Uh, and so being from uh, Holstein, uh, Peter III absolutely adores uh, Frederick. He, he just kind of lives up to him and feels that this is the greatest uh, role model for him. And so as soon as he comes, becomes a Tsar of Russia, uh, he sends a letter to Frederick saying, my troops are at your disposal, sir. And so Russia turns from an enemy to an ally overnight. And the Russian troops in Berlin are no longer occupying Berlin, but are help to Frederick uh, to confront the uh, Austrians and the French. And so with this turnaround, uh, Frederick uh, defeats the Austrians, drives them out from Silesia, uh, and then pushes the French out to um, the borders in the Rhine and secures basically the survival of Prussia, uh, which is uh, absolutely remarkable. Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte valued uh, military capabilities of Frederick very much, and when he uh, came to Prussia, there's a famous moment when he visits Weimar and, and pays a visit to Goethe, the, the famous German poet, he says to Goethe the words that if he, meaning Frederick, was around, we wouldn't be here. Uh, in other words, uh, the, uh, the Prussian army would have been uh, powerful enough to confront Napoleon himself. So uh, this is the Seven Year War. Uh, uh, and um, a miraculous um, survival of Prussia. They didn't gain much territory, but they survived, and this is the most important thing. As we discussed before, that needs to be mentioned that the most devastating defeat of that war was actually suffered by France from the uh, British in America. France lost all of its territories, as we discussed before. Uh, uh, basically, uh, France's chance of owning of, of developing a North American continent that it owned all the way from Louisiana to Detroit, uh, Detroit uh, is lost. And it goes to the Spanish and then later to the British. In any case, uh, uh, getting back to Frederick, um, uh, now we will talk about the, his reforms and you know his modernization. Uh, and, and that is an example of what could have been done in France as well but it wasn't. So the first important thing is a, a new legal code uh, and the concept that everybody is equal before the law. I mean, it would take a French Revolution to do that, but uh, Frederick did it as a kind of a revolution from above. There is one legal code for all subjects uh, and everybody is equal before the law. 
uh, he also um, did not abolish serfdom immediately, but he made it tolerable by substituting payments as a tax uh, that would be regulated by the state. How much peasants pay uh, and how much of it goes to the noble and how much goes to the state. Uh, he also uh, introduced indirect taxes for transactions, which actually generated more revenue than the direct taxes. Uh, he uh, established a silk factory. He established a promoted trade. He created a totally new efficient Prussian bureaucracy that collected taxes and ran administration that became a model for all Europe to follow, uh, and especially later on for the Russians. Uh, his nobility, the Junkers, the owners of landed estates, uh, were loyal. Uh, they, they did not plot against the king, as was the custom in France. They were loyal, obedient servants, and mostly served in the administration or in the army. Uh, his most important reform probably was the establishment of technische Schule, technical schools, that became a model for all Europe. Uh, and, of course, free public education for all citizens. Uh, so he was the first one to do that, that it would be followed later by Maria Teresa. Uh, and perhaps even more uh, important, in the context of the uh, French s subjugation of uh, Huguenots and, and tortures and executions and the uh, case that Voltaire was so preoccupied, uh, his religious policy. Uh, basically, his religious policy is religious tolerations for all. And what would be particularly interesting to know for the Muslim audience are uh, these words. And I quote, All religions are equal and good, as long as those practicing them are the honest people and wish to populate the land. They may be Turk or pagans, we will build mosques and churches for them. So he, he's the first mosque actually appeared in Prussia. Uh, and the first synagogue that had a charter to, uh, from the king uh, appeared in Berlin. Uh, and, and, and that synagogue actually had this charter. Even Hitler did not attack this synagogue in Berlin because it had the charter from the Prussian kings. So this is a, a, an example of his toleration. Now, it also, he invited the Huguenots. There was a whole lot of Huguenots that came from France that he welcomed in uh, Prussia. And today, uh, one of the most beautiful churches in what used to be East Berlin, uh, a couple of blocks from Unter der Linden, which is the main street, like Champs-Élysées in Paris, is a Huguenot church uh, right in the very, very center of Paris. So uh, his religious policy basically was everybody's welcome. Uh, the Jews and the Muslims and, and, and the, uh, the Turk and, and the Orthodox and everybody, uh, as long as they contribute to uh, the benefit of the state. He supported the Jews even though he didn't like them, but he knew practically that they're great uh, in commerce and banking, and, and he, regardless of his personal preferences, uh, he supported them and protected them and allowed them to engage in commerce and take over uh, and be used in administration. Uh, of course, also he promoted arts uh, and, and uh, sponsored uh, various uh, composers and uh, music uh, and concerts. Um, he, um, uh, not only in, in Sanssouci, there were all these gatherings of philosophers, it, it, it went also to other cities and to Berlin, and it becomes a kind of an intellectual capital uh, that would be mimicked by others, and soon Weimar would rise to be a cultural capital of Germany with Goethe and Schiller uh, being uh, you know, main uh, uh, two greatest German-speaking authors who would be there. He composed 100 sonatas and four symphonies that are still played in theaters today and concert halls. Uh, so uh, let's sum up his achievements. Uh, he, for the Germans, he's most important that he put Russia, Prussia on the road of becoming the most important German state that would be destined to unite all of Germany around it uh, later on. Uh, 
but for our purposes of kind of 18th century uh, political development of Europe, I think his most important contribution is in religious toleration at the time when Huguenots were harassed and executed in France. Uh, Germany instituted toleration for all religions. Uh, education for all. Uh, and taxation that's equal for all. All of this was done without the revolution. Or one could say by a revolution from above, by Frederick the Great. And I think that is probably why he is qualified to be called philosopher king or a revolution from above, or an enlightened autocrat uh, who led his country to progress, um, showing the way to others. Thank you. Don't forget to put your likes and to tell your friends and to subscribe to AP European History with Dr. Brofkin.